Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I have a box. A rather big box. Yeah, and it um, contains uh, well you've seen <laughs> you've seen the title of this video of course. It contains an airplane from eSky. It's called the uh, eSky Eagle. 1100, so 1100 millimeter wingspan, uh, just over a meter, and uh, the, the box actually doesn't say Eagle, it just says Eastkai, and maybe this over here in Chinese means uh, Eagle, <laughs> could be, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so uh, in this video we're gonna see what's in this box we're gonna see if it's uh, well packaged, if everything is there. I haven't opened the box yet, so we'll find out together. And uh, we're also gonna assemble this plane here. So in a future video, in a couple of days, we're also gonna fly this plane. And um, yeah, so eSky, you might not be familiar with the brand eSky and as far as I know, they've only made helicopters so far. At least that's what I know eSky from. I've, I've never seen airplanes from eSky. Uh, furthermore, most of those helicopters were toy grade. Not all, but okay. So a first venue, uh, and maybe I'm mistaken, uh, you tell me. But uh, well, to my knowledge, this is their first airplane. And uh, one last thing before we tear into this box, I ordered this airplane uh, because um, I want to FPV it and I want an FPV plane with a tricycle landing gear. So not a tail dragger and one with reasonably big wheels. So not tiny wheels so I can take off from grass. Yeah? So to set the venue. Okay. Let's see what's in this box. Okay, hola die. As you can see, um, everything we have here is packaged in this foam, styrofoam block. And um, there was no outer box or wrapping around this cardboard box. But from the looks of it, well, everything is packaged inside of this styrofoam block, so that looks okay. And okay, let's continue the unpacking business. Day. I have uh, repositioned the camera a little, as you can see, so you can have a better look at things. This is uh, all that came out of the box. I've had a quick look and so far I'm quite happy with what I got. Let me show you what we have and uh, why, I'm <laughs> why I'm happy with things. Okay, we get some um, black uh, decals. Uh, which you uh, obviously have to apply yourself to your liking. I will probably add some black, maybe, wing striping for visibility. But, um, okay, well, um, as you've seen from the uh, product pictures, the plane is completely black and white, which makes it look nice, I think. Nevertheless, I'll, uh, I, I'm not sure at this moment what I'm gonna do, what kind of color scheme or striping I'm uh, gonna, gonna do, but I'm gonna probably at least put some black or other color bands, uh, wing tape on the wings for visibility. Okay, decals. We have ourselves a, well, <laughs> uh, what? Okay, oh, is this uh, all in Chinese? No, it's not. It's not as bad as it looks. Okay, a quick start guide. It 
shows you how the thing goes together, which probably won't be rocket science. And um, well, yeah, the manual does tell you the center of gravity, but that's not even necessary, as you'll see in a minute. Okay, and uh, the other side of the manual is in Chinese. Okay, so not a whole lot in the manual, but I'm pretty sure we won't need much, so that's okay. Then we have ourselves some landing gear, let me take it out. Uh, uh, as you can see, some of the things are uh, in a bubble wrap. So that's nice, the smaller pieces if you will. Let me take those out of the bubble wrap. The first thing I was uh, actually very glad with while I'm packaging it is the size of these wheels or rather the tires. I hope you'll be able to see the, the actual size. They are actually even bigger than I was hoping for. Pretty big wheels. They are not as big as, for instance, on a uh, Duraflay Tundra. You might know that plane, a, a bush plane. But these, these are definitely bigger than an average wheel on an 1100 mm airplane. So I feel pretty secure in stating that uh, I should be able to take off and land on grass with these wheels. Slash, and they are foam foam, squishy tires. So yeah, nice. They actually even feel durable. Okay. And um, this uh, landing uh, gear itself looks to be some kind of plastic. It actually even feels a little bit like Kevlar, which I'm sure it is not. Uh, but it's not aluminium, nor is it carbon fiber. It is some kind of plastic. So there's uh, a little bit of flex in them, but not a whole lot. Yeah, it looks. It, it doesn't. No, it doesn't look like Kevlar, but it feels a li little like Kevlar. Okay, time will tell how durable this is. Uh, obviously, you get uh, two main landing gear and one a front wheel and uh, yeah the plane will have a steerable uh, nose wheel nice man these are really really big excellent okay uh, this here is the horizontal oh i hadn't even noticed this but it has a full flying tail what does that mean? Well, it, it doesn't have a horizontal stabilizer and an elevator. The entire tail surface will move, which will then be its elevator. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but in the foam there, uh, there is an up imprinted into the, into the foam. So that you know that this is the top side of the, the horizontal stabilizer slash elevator. Um, the shape is actually different than what I would have expected, right? This is the top. I hope this is uh, visible enough, but uh, yeah, <laughs> if it wouldn't have set up, I would have thought that this would be up, but it's not. Okay, and it has a carbon, carbon, yeah, spar for the tail, an, a, a square spar slots into the tail and uh, this then slots into the airplane and it looks a little bit like uh, the XKA1200 in case you are familiar with that plane it also has a full flying tail and um, yeah so this won't require any tools you just slide this bar carbon bar into the tail over here of the airplane no tools required, which is definitely nice, of course. In case you need to uh, disassemble the plane for transport, it's nice that you don't have to uh, take 
tools with you. Okay, and one thing, there is a bit of a scratch on one of my tail surfaces, as you can, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that over here, which is a shame. It is at the bottom, I'll put some tape on it to make the surface nice and smooth, but it's a shame. Um, and also weird, the packaging wasn't damaged at all. I was careful taking things out still. So this must have happened in, in a factory. Yeah. Okay. It won't affect the flight performance, but still. You got yourself a new plane, you don't want to have it damaged. Obviously. So let's hope that's the only damage. And uh, over here we've got another carbon spar, a thicker one, and a sh it's also shorter. This is uh, the main wing joiner spar thing. Yeah, it slots into the wing over here. And okay. Okay, so um, both of the wings have a servo already installed, even also already linked up, as you can hopefully see. And uh, yeah, it's all white. This, uh, this airplane, there's a little bit of uh, plastic, a plastic uh, shaping thing over here, which a screw will screw into one of these screws. And uh, yeah, that will keep things together. And I hope you'll be able to see that, but there's a CG marker on the bottom of the wing. So again, the manual doesn't need to state the CG. It's, uh, yeah. This, this is very convenient, obviously. And uh, if it wouldn't have had markings, I would have placed markings the, myself. And uh, yeah, this looks uh, just fine. Cool stuff. Yeah, obviously we've got uh, two wings. And uh, again, both have their aileron uh, servos already installed. And uh, there's no flaps on this airplane. The, the, the ailerons themselves are pretty big and um, several wire is obviously already installed. You get a, uh, a Y, 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 a Y harness to um, join up the two ailerons uh, and uh, you'll uh, be using these as one channel. If you want to at least, you could opt to go for two channels. Uh, could you, well, maybe, yeah, you could opt to uh, use the ailerons as flaperons, as the wings don't have flaps. Is possible. And we'll just see in the, my uh, flight tests if the plane actually needs flaps, right? So the wings themselves look perfectly fine, no scratches at all. I do see black paint dots here and there, which is weird, as there is no paint used on this plane at all. But uh, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. It doesn't really matter to me, as I'll probably cover this with some wing tape, but uh, yeah. Oh well. And the last thing we found in the box is uh, the fuselage itself and it's uh, slightly bigger than I uh, was expecting as you can see the motor is already installed the propeller is even installed and this is uh, a brushless motor it is an eSky branded motor a 2306 which I'm not sure what it will look like to you um, it is built like a modern motor, which means it doesn't have a bottom. Um, if you are not into quadcopters, uh, let me just tell you that this is built <laughs> like a modern quadcopter motor. And it's even, uh, the size is even the, the same as in modern quadcopter motors 2306. And it is a 25, uh, 2250 kV motor. Pretty, well, a normal kV. Uh, I don't have specs of the propeller, 7 inch propeller, and I'm not sure what the pitch is. 
seven seven nine eight propeller hmm hmm seven inch propeller it doesn't look like a it looks like um you know what i go out on a limb and say that this is a six by four propeller three blades obviously but a 2250 uh, motor ideally you'd want a approximately six by four propeller so I'm guessing that this, <laughs> this is a 6x4 propeller. And yes, the plane does fly on a free cell LiPo. Not included, but well, that's what you need to fly this plane. Over here, we see a 30 amp brushless, obviously ESC, already hooked up. And uh, over here is uh, where, the, where you hook up your receiver. There is more than enough room over here to uh, place a receiver. And uh, even maybe a VTX, even though I'm not sure if, if there will be airflow through this part of the fuselage. I, well, if eSky is smart, there is airflow because the ESC is here. So again, you should be able to place an, an, a VTX, a video transmitter in this compartment. More than enough room, which is nice what more can i tell you ah yeah there's some uh, plastic structures over here in which the wings will bolt into and okay at the bottom uh, over here we have some slats in which the landing gear will slot into and i haven't come across screws or anything for this the landing gear uh, we'll see in a minute. Maybe they just clip in. I don't know. Okay, I am now actually looking for a an air exit. And oh, oh, okay, over here. I hope you'll be able to see that. But there's an air airflow cooling exit over here, which is actually a smart place because the propeller will pull air out of this hole over here and an air, oh, uh, air inlet over here in the canopy very nice by now you've uh, obviously also noticed that this uh, fuselage has this big black uh, window nose piece which will probably aid in visibility quite a bit in orientation if you will so uh, i will still probably put some black marking on the wings but again this this will help out quite a lot in orientation which is nice all right and i'm sure it's held down with a yeah with a magnet there's a magnet over here and some metal over there or the other way around i'm not sure and over here is where you obviously place your battery uh, there is already some velcro in place and a strap uh, the strap is probably not even needed but uh, well it's nice that they added a strap of course over here you see the xt60 which uh, is uh, hooked up to the, the esc obviously so um, yeah that's a convenient connector a lot of uh, modern lipos have an xt60 on them so that's nice over here you see two servos which are both for the tail fully hooked up so no installation required on those which is uh, yeah it's nice it uh, should be a very quick build this now uh, this over here the servo on your right is for the, the rudder and for the steerable nose wheel i'm not sure if you'll be able to see that well but over here you see a, a linkage for the steerable nose wheel which hooks up to this Thing over here and uh, hard to see but this the servo on your right actually has two push rods on them on it sorry one going to the rear of the plane so that's for the rudder and on the right there's a push rod going to the front to uh, to that steerable nose wheel thing and let me see yeah uh, room is there a lot of room in here yeah actually there is quite a bit of room behind this section in this section uh, it is 
yeah, you can get to it, but it's not super duper easy to, uh, for instance, if you'd want to uh, install a flight controller or a video transmitter over here, there is definitely a lot of room in the fuselage, but it's a bit hard to get to. So, um, yeah, be aware of that. Um, from looking of it, uh, at it, uh, you might be able to get away by making a hatch over, over here to uh, get to the inners. I'd say that the plane is strong enough to uh, take the hit of you cutting into the foam. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, that's not... Uh, you'll have to see. There is, again, quite a bit of room in here to place video transmitters, so FPV equipment uh, or stabilizers, gyros, flight controllers and such. Just so you know. And uh, what more can I tell you? Well, actually, let's go and uh, build this uh, airplane. Why don't we? Let us actually start with the landing gear and I've already done a quick test fit. It's <laughs> super duper easy. Uh, you see this sled over here and you simply slide the landing gear in it and I'll stop talking. So that you can hear that click. <laughs> yeah, it simply clicks in place. Click. Okay, no. And you see these grooves, holes over here. There's actually a push button in them and you can't get uh, in them with your fingers. But for instance, the wing bolts that are obviously supplied with the plane. If you push those in, you can take the land gear out again. Uh, regrettably, I don't, I don't have three hands. Uh, yeah, okay, you'll just have to take my word for it. If you press something into these holes, there's a button in them and you can simply slide the landing gear out again. Yeah, super duper easy, basically. Now the front wheel slots into here, but there's a screw and uh, yeah, so <laughs> there is a screw over there. And that means that you do need tools, actually. One Phillips head screwdriver to secure the front wheel. And so far I think that's the only tool you actually need, but nonetheless you need <laughs> a Phillips head for, uh, for the front wheel. That was easy so far and yeah, it looks uh, different. It looks like a stout plane, if you will, with its big honking wheels. Very nice. All right, and next up is the tail. And I was uh, playing with the idea of using some glue, but this bar, right, has a lot of friction in, in the um, horizontal stabilizer. Actually, I haven't glued it in yet and I can put it out but not easily at all and well if you know about airplanes there's not a whole lot of, a whole lot of force driving the, the horizontal stabilizer out in this direction. Right we'll see what it looks like after a first test flight but I don't think you'll need glue for this and uh, let me slot it all in. Obviously take care to uh, make sure you put these, uh, these in the right way around with up facing <laughs> upwards and it looks like I've hit a snap. I can't get it in. Okay, so this is uh, completely uh, stupid and a bit of a fail and I hope you'll be able to see it actually. The spar that joins the two uh, horizontal stabilizers slash uh, elevators is far too long. 
I've checked and checked and checked again. I can't get it further into the, the two tail surfaces. I haven't done anything wrong for as far as I can see. This is really weird because, uh, well, the design is quite nice and uh, the rest of the fit uh, looks great. But uh, yeah, it's definitely far too long. So I'll have to saw approximately one and a half centimeters, I'd say, off of that spar. And again, you, I go out on a limb by saying that you definitely don't need glue. But uh, yeah, it's a bit uh, weird. All right, I tried and tried again. Uh, this is uh, definitely uh, an, uh, an error in the design or uh, the, an error in my <laughs> design. And uh, obviously it's not difficult to saw or dremel a piece off of this uh, the, 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 that, uh, carbon bar, but uh, well, you shouldn't have to. It's not a huge issue, I'll solve it, but it's a bit weird. Again, maybe I'm missing something, but I don't think so. Let's continue. And the next thing we'll tackle is the main wing. Now, again, you don't need to um, apply glue to the spar. Just slide both wings onto the spar, making sure you uh, keep the, the servo leads at the bottom of the wing. And uh, yeah, uh, regrettably um, for the plane, uh, this, <laughs> this fits together perfectly. Really a shame that tail, uh, because the rest of the plane seems to fit together very, very nicely. You might have noticed that the uh, Aedons even have these, these carbon bars in them to stiffen them up. Very, very nice. And um, let me see. Yeah, I will probably tape, put some tape on the, the join of these two wings, even though it's probably not even necessary. But uh, just to make sure they never slide apart. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. Um, let me see. There is a bit of dihedral in the wings. Not a whole lot, but that should make it an easy plane to fly for beginners. I hope you'll be able to see that uh, the, the tips of the wings point slightly upwards. Only just a little bit. But uh, yeah, there is a little bit of dihedral in these wings. Now at this point you'll have to decide if you want to use two channels for your aerons. I will probably do so, channels 1 and 6 for my aerons. Or if you want to join them, and uh, like mentioned before you get this Y harness. And if you uh, hook that up to the two leads, for the ailerons, very simple, white on white, black on black, there you go, now you, are, uh, you only have one channel, um, you'll only need one channel for your ailerons. So if you think, uh, well I'm not going to use flaps, I'm not going to bother with that, you can uh, opt to do this, and this way you'll only need a four channel receiver. I will need uh, more than uh, four channels if I uh, opt to go for uh, two, two servo leads to my receiver like so. Therefore I will use this here receiver, an Eversky X8R, an 8 channel receiver, which is obviously more than enough. Yeah, and um, I'll be using this here transmitter, my Eversky Horus X10S for this airplane. So obviously you'll need to uh, hook up your receiver to these uh, leads and to the leads in the fuselage, which are all over here. 
and you'll have to uh, set up your transmitter obviously for uh, for this new uh, airplane and I won't be telling you how to set your uh, transmitter up because that's different on all kinds of transmitters. Uh, what you obviously will need to do is screw the main wing onto the fuselage. Uh, be sure to uh, check if those, those servo leads don't get snagged up between the wing and the fuselage. Feed them in to the cavity, place the wing. And it kind of looks like it finds its, its proper place by it on its own, that's nice. Okay, so uh, the package comes with um, three uh, bolts and they are all thumb, thumb <laughs> bolts. So yeah, uh, so for, the, for the nose wheel you need uh, a Phillips head uh, screwdriver, for, but for the rest you don't need any tools at all. Which is nice. And again, if you uh, want to uh, take this plane apart for transport, you can disassemble the plane entirely and reassemble it without tools. Hartstikke day, and uh, yeah, I've placed a uh, battery uh, in the nose, otherwise it would be wheeling, <laughs> like so. Hartstikke day. And that is basically the entire assembly. Um, I will, uh, of course, uh, need to uh, take out the Dremel to uh, solve this, uh, this tailpipe. I, I probably <laughs> could fly the plane like this, but I won't, obviously. But uh, yeah, that's a shame. If you uh, end up also ordering this plane, I would very much appreciate hearing from you if you also have this issue. I did order it. Uh, from uh, Banggood, there's a link in the description to this plane. Myself, uh, with a mystery shopper, Banggood wasn't aware of me being a reviewer. So I didn't uh, get uh, a, a better specimen than uh, you would get, ideally. Uh, maybe this is just um, reviewer's luck, I don't know. Again, I'd like to hear from you if you have the same problem as me with this deal. It'll fly, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a shame. Um, especially because the rest of the plane looks and feels very nice. Yeah. Um, also, I expect the plane to not be super duper powerful with this motor. It is a, again, a 2306 motor, which is a bit small. Um, if I were to design a plane like this, I would probably go with a 2212-ish motor, so a bigger motor. Um, on the other hand, uh, motors have become a lot more powerful in the last year, so uh, we'll see what kind of performance we get out of this package. I am very much looking forward to flying this airplane. Um, it is meant to be an, uh, an FPV plane for me. Um, obviously, you can uh, fly this airplane uh, line of sight. Uh, you don't need to. Uh, you don't have to make it an uh, FPV airplane, but I will. That's my uh, intention with this airplane. But uh, yeah, so um, I'm very much looking forward to trying it out. Also, there is a lot of room in inside here in the canopy. Um, so uh, you could easily uh, add another battery, a small battery, to feed your, uh, to power your uh, FV equipment and then mount your camera on top over here. D definitely possible. Just so you know. Okay, a short roundup. I think the plane looks great. 
the assembly, if I wouldn't have had the problem with the tail, was super duper easy. I'm sure you'd agree, especially the landing gear and the wing bolting on with thumb screws. Very, very easy. Uh, the tail just uh, slides on in. If it would have fit, uh, that uh, would have been the end of that. Super duper easy. The only tool you really need is uh, to bolt down the front wheel. And that's it. And uh, again, I, I like the looks of the plane. I'm happy with uh, what I have. Apart from the tail problems of this aeroplane. Boohoo! <laughs> okay, so um, I'll get that sorted uh, after uh, finishing uh, this video. And um, hopefully in the coming days I'll be able to fly this airplane. Be on the lookout for that. For now, I want to thank you for watching. If you have questions, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.